Welcome to episode 17 of this Let's Play series. We're uh, getting into it now with Dwarf Fortress, and uh, it's going to be a long series, I think. Uh, we still haven't had any, had any real interaction with the uh, uh, with the enemies, <laughs> but that will come. We just have to get prepared for it. So there's going to be a lot to cover in this one. So this, again, yeah, going to be a long Dwarf Fortress series. I uh, always shy away from that because I always feel like you guys will get bored with it, but I'm loving it. I'm actually loving doing this. Anyway, I thought I'd actually st kick this one off with just some um, some questions and answers and some maybe some little comments and things uh, from the first eight episodes, seven or, eight, seven or eight episodes of the series so far. Uh, just a few things, actually. It's been great because you guys have actually highlighted some things that I'm doing wrong and or you know that I could do better and so I want to actually go through those and uh, you know and essentially thank you for for pointing those out it's a it's a big game you know like so it's uh, and I don't I don't know uh, you know I don't know that much of it to be honest like it's sort of one of those things where I know enough to be dangerous but it's um, but it's great when I do get these comments because it it also broadens my knowledge and, and understanding of the game and I also forget a lot of things as well so uh, anyway let's just go through uh, one thing I did, well, no one actually mentioned this one, but this is something I meant to show is actually, where are my levers? My levers are in here. Now, did I name them? I did now name them. I didn't do this one before. Uh, so I've actually named these. But you also then want to make sure that the area that they go to, like if we go to here, did I do this one? I can't even remember if I did this one. Did I name it? something else no I didn't see it's just a tower cap bridge but this needs to be called whatever we've called it when we link back to the um so this is the upper cavern gate so upper cavern gate is what we're going to name this one too that way if I'm ever confused I can then just have a look at either the the well the item or the lever to know which one I'm actually uh, I'm actually then sort of changing so if I just go back down again by the way another thing I like to do is to have like a uh, an easy way. Now this is, a, this is a fair way down that we actually end up having our levers. I might just make this into like F6 or F, yeah, F5 which is on the next grip cross, cross in my F keys. So if I just go back up across into here and just... Um, now I'm finding that this H doesn't always work. It did this time. Okay, that's good. So F5, we're just going to call this one... Um, I'll call this one Tavern. Tavern and levers. Well, it's actually more tavern and, and hall. So we've got it assigned there. And so, and this one here, I'm just going to go and, and then assign it to this posi particular position. In fact, what I might do is I might even just bring it across a little bit so that it's actually got all of that. Now, we're going to have a whole lot of things off this, this area. This is going to be um, all like temples, all sorts of different things coming, up, coming off this way. So we'll just we'll center it there. <clears throat> that way F5 I can then just go and click on that one and just go back there again whenever I feel like it okay let's just go and right click this one here is the market gate uh, we're just going to go across show the link building go across to it and then just rename this one to the market gate because it's right near the trade the trade market um, so that one's now done F5 go back to here again and then the last one we had was the tower gate and so we then go to um, show, uh, take us to the link uh, bridge, which is this one back out through this side. And, um, and then we just go across and this is the tower gate. Okay, there we are. So they've now all been named and I can then just press F5 and never want to go back to this particular zone. So this will be an important zone for us ultimately. We've got a lot to do in here. Uh, there's a lot to do everywhere in the fortress. Anyway, that was one thing I wanted to go through. The next thing is actually people have suggested that instead of just doing all the individual crafts, they should just do rock crafts and then mug separately. So, um, whoops, I keep on going to the wrong thing there. Sorry about that. We're back again. So I'm just going to go back up to my workshop layer. Now at the moment, we've got F1 is outside. I'm going to redefine that to over here. And um, so we're sort of looking at the actual tower itself. So I'll just call this one, say, the tower. We're going to ultimately get rid of this. So I'll keep this one where that is. Um, just that, that stockpile of wood in behind the uh, behind our area. So we'll just go across into the... Um, uh, where is it? H. And I'm just going to call this one the, um, the tower. So we'll redefine where that one actually is. Just make sure that one's got it. Then we've got the cavern gate. So that's F2. 
which is down in here with the cavern gate down through this side which has also then got the um, the actual upper cavern gate as well so we've got the um, market gate yeah so th this is basically just sort of the outside of the fortress by the way there's a little thing in through here that has now been finished so i'm just going to go and, and get this dog uh, to go now to this restraint so I just click on the restraint and then add the animal to it so we've got currently got two stray dogs um not sure which one it actually is i'll just grab the top one i guess and so someone will then come and change that one through there uh this restraint i'm going to go and get rid of that that rope so that way we just don't need to have it anymore so we're not we will ultimately get rid of this one quite a bit now this is a fair way down in the in the fortress i've got to sort of say like ultimately if he if this dog gets triggered by anything and we don't know about it it's time to lock down everything and so um not not only like it's already too late at that point for this particular door so whatever whatever gets there can get inside but usually it's going to be thieves and if that's the case they're quite fun to chase down in the fortress and kill them off and so if it's thieves that's not really a problem if it's something that's coming through here something big and dangerous then that is a problem so that's it's a bit of a tricky one this is a this is fairly dangerous having this thing open like this but we sort of need to keep it open while there's um, the possibility of of um, other things coming in like ultimately when we're using the trap layer that we're going to sort of be creating up here at some point um, we will actually then uh, like we'll get a trigger and then we can just shut down the whole fortress meaning that the enemy has to then go back up to here to then escape which is a long way up so for for thieves we're going to do okay with that. We're going to sort of be able to um, to trap them in fairly quickly, but it's uh, for the others is going to be a bit of the problem. So if it's an invader, then we're going to we're going to be struggling. So that will that's just the risk that we're taking at this point in time. So that's what, that one in through there. Uh, another comment. I oh, saw rock crafts. So we're just going to quickly go and do that as well. So just get these things out of the way. Thanks. Yeah, as I said, thanks for um, thanks for doing this. We go to the craft dwarf workshop. And I'm going to go to the work orders. Actually, we'll just go to work orders in through here. And so we've got rock amulets. We'll uh, ditch those. Rock bracelets, we'll ditch. Rock mugs, we'll keep, because that's not part of the other crafts. Scepters, toys, and that's it. So we then go just go across. Instead of putting all of those in, I could have just done... Um, if we just go into the craft dwarf, work, dwarf workshop. Just rock crafts. So uh, where are we? Rock crafts. <laughs> A bit further down... And that will then that will then mix up all of these other different things that I just I put them all in there and I'm thinking I didn't even think about just putting rock crafts in. That's all I needed to actually then go and do. So uh, rock crafts have now been added to the bottom of the list and ten yeah that's fine and we'll do that one when there's less than say a hundred. So um, the amount of non, non okay when when the amount of non-economic hard rock is available is greater than uh, actually that's a good idea to do this. Yeah, I'll just have them churn these out. That way we can always have rock, rocks being used. So let's just go and, uh, and add that one to the list. You say greater than 20, I think. So when we've got more than 20 rocks around, that will be fine. And we've got a heap of them, a heap of them. Actually, 20, probably 20 is probably not really, uh, probably I would like more than that uh, around the actual place itself. So let's make it say more, uh, is greater than say a hundred. That does keep us with uh, fairly, fairly, uh, fairly full areas for us to then sort of look after. Now another thing was the um, uh, another tip which I had completely forgotten about. It's funny because I was playing with it, but I didn't actually action it when I was sort of trying to get all of these different rocks. I've forbidden these rocks, but it looks looks doesn't look very neat. So what I can do through here is just come through into my uh, so into hide an item or building from your view, citizens will still use it. So I've still I've, I've uh, stopped them from looking at that one, but I can now sort of just change the the view of this. And then when I right click, it's then gone. So it makes it neat. And so if you are trying to neaten your fortress, this is a really good little tip actually, just for your own sanity sort of sake in that sort of sense. If there's if you do have an area full of rock, you can basically just make it invisible. But um, I don't like doing it with rock that I do want to use, but for, certainly for things like this, this is a really, really good tip just to clean this one right up. So we'll just go, go and get the invisible invisibility cloak in through here and just make it really nice and neat. Because neatness is very important in Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> 
the aesthetics and uh, because we're not going to be ever get access to those rocks again so if I just right click they then disappear and that that then does feel so much nicer so that was a great little tip uh, that came in through the comments uh, now what else do we have there was um, just bear with me yeah, there was a question about why I make all my bridges 3x3. Three three. And it's a very good question because I, I didn't think about it before, but that's going to be confusing for a lot of you guys, thinking these bridges must be 3x3. Three three. Uh, and what does it mean? Like, you know, what if you don't do it 3x3? Three three? Can, can things then crawl over it? It's purely aesthetic. I just like the neatness of the 3x3 three three bridges so I can see exactly what is going on. Uh, a bridge can be pretty much any size you like. Like if we go across into, or well not any size, it's about 30 across is about the, the, um, the biggest you can make one. So if I go across into, for example, my build menu, go into constructions and then just go to bridge. Uh, I've never tried just making a one size bridge, but if we just go down to that big area that we had been sort of designating, like in here, for example, like if I just try to make a like a, a bridge that's going to raise at the top, I can do just a one size bridge. So that's going to be like there's a bridge there set for one size. I'll just go and cancel that construction. But that's so a one by one. I've never done that, but you could do that if you wanted to. Um, so that's certainly doable. Uh, it's just that I like seeing the bigger bridges personally, uh, just like a bigger area. I have created bigger bridges, uh, like depending on what they actually are, like retracting bridges, we're going to be making bigger ones of those. I don't know whether it's 30 by 30 would be the actual biggest actual bridge, which would just be monstrous. Also, sometimes you might want to be making an atom smasher, in which case you do want to have like a, a massive area like this. So you can actually make a bridge that big. It's 69 um, pieces of rock is required for that one. So you could just go, you know, oh, yep, I want that. <laughs> and that's a bridge as well. As long as you've got the materials, you can do it whatever size you like. Now, the weird thing about this is when it raises, it actually raises up to one tile high. Whether it be whether it started at one tile or whether it be three by threes, or whatever it might be, it still just raises up to one and it does block off anything around the outside edge there. So that's actually sort of where we are. Now, if a bridge, I'll just show you a few other little things with bridges. Um, if, and doors actually, I'll just play with some doors in through this side, I'll just go and cancel that construction. Let's just say that we wanted to block off an access point where there's, this is the outside where the enemy might come from. And uh, and this is the only channel, actually where can I do this to sort of show this? Um, I'm trying to find a, an area. Let's pretend that this is the area we're going to be blocking off. And we're, our, our fortress is in here. Or let's just do it over here. That way we sort of, at least we're sort of on the edge. This is our fortress. This is the outside world where anything can sort of come and reach us. One thing I like to do is to put a door in because a door you can lock straight away. And it's sort of actually, well, it's sort of like what I've done down in the F2 layer. This one here, you can see here, I've got a door with a bridge, a drawbridge on the outside. The drawbridge takes a bit of time a, to go and sort of pull the lever, but then also B, for it to then raise up. It's about 100 frames before it actually will then raise. Uh, you can lock a door immediately by, by doing this, just by making it forbidden. It will then have a, a bar across it. So it's really quite cool that you can just make it passable again. So if, uh, unless an invader takes the door, if an invader walks through, the, through an open door, it then becomes controllable by them. So you can't go back retrospectively and do that if if it's already been bypassed by somebody active in the fortress. So you can very quickly, that's why I left one in through here, just in case there's some sort of activity, I'll probably end up putting a dog out here as well, just so that the dog gets activated and we can then quickly come and lock down what we possibly can while the dog actually fights. In fact, I might do that as well, right? well just when we're thinking about it. So I'm just gonna go across to cages and restraints, rope or chain, I think I've still got one more. Now you want to put it right in the middle of a doorway like this. In fact, this is a good illustration of, of what I was talking about. You want to put it right in the middle there because the um, if they if it's there, um, they're going to, and I will put a door there as well. So I'm going to put a door on the outside and a, and a restraint right here, or I could do the restraint right here because the, do the dog will then walk around any of the points around this area. So a restraint here would actually mean that the dog would catch anything that does come in this way. I've left this as three by three in case I need to get a military force out there in there just to get them ready before they go out and actually tackle whatever's going to be outside. So uh, we'll leave the, the dog restraint, actually leave the dog restraint just here. I've got a fair few ropes and um, 
And so we'll then wait for, or place a dog in through there. Dogs are great because any sneaking uh, enemy that comes through will, will activate the dog. Just don't put a dog, uh, like if you put a dog in the middle of a three by three room, uh, a sneaking unit may be able to sneak past a dog if the dog is anywhere over here. And the dog will walk away one one tile away from where the restraint is, like what this one has done down through here. If he was down in here and a sneaking bandit sort of had got through here and snuck across here, the dog wouldn't see him. The dog has to be right next to the bandit for it to be activated. So this is why this was not a good location, but this one actually is, or even just right next to it. But that's going to be fine to put the dog right there on that restraint and also right here. This dog will be sacrificial, essentially, uh, if something does come through here, but at least we'll know. We'll know about it early. Very, very important. The um, Now, as far as doors and things are concerned, this bridge comes up and blocks off this particular edge and so that's not really going to be a problem. So, so by, by raising that one, that is, it's almost like a rock wall. So we might as well just go back in again and just go to doors and hatches, create a door and throw, the, throw a door in there as well. Just so we've got a door. That way I can do the same deal in through here. If, something, if I see that there's something coming and it's not a door smasher like a troll or something, I can then just close the door and that's going to stop goblins and all sorts of different weird and wonderful things and thieves. Anything at all that can't get through a door will actually then not be able to get through that one through there. So that's a um, that's a, a nice way of doing things. Now I was play I was playing on Twitch and I was I'll just go back down to that other layer and just to explain a problem that I that I a, a big mistake that I made. And what it was was let's actually yeah we'll do it. Let's say this is the fortress here and this is the outside. I had a door, in fact, I had two doors. I don't think I've done it in this fortress, but I had two doors like this. And so I had one that was right up against, uh, one that was over here and one that was over here. When I built my bridge, I I didn't think, I forgot about that the, the, anything can move diagonally. And so I ended up leaving, a, I had a massive, with my construction through here, I had the bridge built like this. Hang on, that's not gonna be it. Constructions, bridges. And so I had my bridge built, it's still a three by three, but built like this. And um, just so you can sort of see it. I had a door there and I just, in my head, I thought it was secure. I needed to go the one across because units can just move through the diagonal. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, we had a, um, a forgotten beast that just went straight through. Through the, uh, through the door, because it hadn't locked the door as well. By the way, most forgotten beasts, unless it des designated as weak, uh, can, can break their way through a wooden, uh, like a door, like a, not just a wooden door, any door. Anyway, we'll cancel that construction, but that's a big, a big one. Make sure that you're covering it, like what I've done uh, in the other areas of the fortress as we come back up. Fully covered, so there's di no diagonal movement into that area there. Now, this one here, um, in hindsight, I really should extend this bridge and make that one then go uh, so that it's all the way across. Do we do that yet? I think we should really. Um, that way I can then block that off as well. There's no reason to do that because ultimately this is going to also have access into our fortress. So I think we'll actually ditch this one now as well, uh, just while we still can. And so uh, it's going to leave us a little bit vulnerable, not too badly, but we then will need to sort of get that one established. So that way we block off both areas of the, uh, like so that this, draw, this drawbridge then covers both sides. Okay, uh, that was another one. Uh, now we've done the three by three bridges. Yes, and but they do just collapse to one high. They don't, and it they don't, like, doesn't matter what size bridge, it just goes to one high, which is great. So that's a really cool way of just locking things down. Uh, and the reason for that is because there are creatures that can smash through doors or just go through open doors. Uh, now, the other thing is, which I didn't do, and we've got into trouble because of it. If we have a look at our stock supplies and uh, look at the seeds uh, down through here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Not, there we go. You can see we've got dimple cup spawn, which we don't need. We've got some plump helmet spawn through here as well, and some cave wheat seeds. So we don't have a real lot of it around the place. And so I think a lot of these are being planted. Yeah, these are actually being planted anyway. So 
one of the, the reason that I don't have any anything to plant is that I forgot to actually turn off my my kitchen stocks and this is quite some time ago so we keep on running out of out of things to do I was going to go through this in detail anyway when we make soap but um, because this is really important uh, and when we butcher things it'll only show you what you currently actually have so the pigtails I don't want them to use it for brewing the seeds I have actually I have turned these off but I haven't turned I don't have any um, plump helmet spawn to sort of show not to do that one. Drinks in through here as well. Uh, dwarven wine. We're not using dwarven wine. We, I did, so I did show this, but I don't have a much to show at the moment. But there, there usually is. If there's, if there's um, plump helmet spawn that hasn't been planted, it will show up where you can actually cook it. Forbid it so that you're not actually going to be using that for... for um, you're not going to you don't want to cook with anything because it destroys the seeds in the cooking process so that's not going to be helpful and so dimple cup spawn that's probably why we've got such poor numbers of seeds we are getting through and we do actually have now access to the outside so i can i can get things from the outside out through there also the other thing when, when i did my episode where we had the fishermen that got, then got caught into the um in the aquifer uh, there was a lot of, you know, there was a few questions about, you know, can you, A, can you catch thing? Why did he fish there? What does he think he can catch? Now, and also, uh, you know, could we have, have put him into a squad and made him go somewhere else? And the answer to, uh, well, I'll answer both questions. When you when you create like a natural source, and I don't know if we've got anything up the top, if we just go to F1, yeah, we've got a river that's always permanently frozen. Now, if this ever thaws, and I think it does thaw, in mid well it's midsummer now maybe it's going to be late summer early autumn this these this may may sort of thaw at that point we're going to be able to get different sorts of fish like river fish that would then come through this particular river if we'd find one sort of back down in, in the cavern layers which we haven't found anything oh actually there we have if when we see blue this means water generally <laughs> it should mean water yeah and this this is good it it goes off the map this is now, and what this is, this is quite important actually. I hadn't, I hadn't seen this before. So we've actually now just discovered this. And we've got another one way down the corner here as well that also goes off the map. And so these are permanent sources. There we go. Look, you can see they've got cave fish. Uh, but when it goes off the edge like this, if we can try to set up a, a fishing zone safely near this water, and, and I say safely because it's actually very hard to do, uh, we can catch fish not just not just cave fish, and I don't think we don't know if we'll see any through here. Not just cave fish to, to, to get the fishing done through here, but also um, we'd actually end up getting some fish in from the ocean as well that will actually swim in, like nautiluses and things like that. But if we go through to uh, where we can get shells, so we can actually make that into a useful area for us ultimately. Um, so yeah, there's some interesting things in there. So that's actually something, of, now that I've found that, actually, I hadn't seen that before. And I did want to make use of this. Actually, what have we got over here? This is our water source. No, that's up above. Great. Okay. No, this is above us. Damn it. It's above us. It's not below us. Okay. Well, I need I need one below us. I need to find one in the cavern layers below below where we are. Below this level here, at least. And unfortunately, well, this is on the same level. It's on the same level as that. It's, what's what's up, up above it? Hmm, I've got to think about this actually. It's not going to go. This is not going to go above this. Its level here. <clears throat> Our aquifers will. I might keep this. I might actually make use of this. This is not that far away from where we are, and it's actually quite useful. It's quite usable, in the sense that we can actually then do different things with it. That is actually really, really interesting. I hadn't seen this before. So anyway, if we can get a fishing zone using this this uh, this water from this particular area, we'll get other different types of fish. If we don't, and if we only have this source in through here, we'll get cave turtles or just turtles. So that they will catch um, essentially just turtles from this particular zone in through here. So that's a, it's just interesting the way that water does work and it's modeled on the map as well. Now, the other way that we, uh, the other thing that was the question was how, how could have I gotten my dwarf out of there? Now, I don't know if I changed him. I can't remember now. It's, I'm a fair few episodes ahead. I can go to my labor menu and I can then go to my fisher dwarves. Yeah, I've already done it. So I've already gone through this one. I can just make nobody does this, which then stops them from fishing. They will not fish. And I should do that with hunters 
as well and I have yeah so anyone that comes into the fortress as a hunter is not going to do that particular role so um, that's sort of where we are with everything at this point in time now I've still got my builders building which would be good I think I'll just keep them doing the things while we do it let's just uh, now that was all I had written down in the in my list of things but um, I know, I know there was a many, many more comments and questions and different things like that, but I did answer a lot of them. I just wrote those ones down because I thought that there were things that I probably didn't explain well enough when I was doing that one in the actual series itself. Now, we spent 25 minutes. Wow, I will make this one go over a little bit a little bit of time. Uh, so what we're trying to do is now... This, this, is inter this interests me over here now because... Uh, this is now an area where if I go down into this zone in through here, I need to have a well inside my um, inside my um, inside my hospital if I can do it. And if I go down, unfortunately, this this is right here. So if I go and have a look where, and a well really should be two two depth layers to make it sort of then work. But the water source there, but a well in here would be so good. It'd be so good. I might still make use of it here, I think. I'll just I'll just wall this off. So let's plan the well. Just where do we want the well? We want the well pretty much in the middle. Of, I'll make it here. So if we make a well in this instance here, and so I'm just going to go and channel down at this point, and uh, we'll just get ready. So the well, I need, like if I can get a well right in the middle of the hospital, now where is that going to go? It's going to end up being right there. Um... I'll just come back one. Yep, so just into that point there. I'm going to channel that one down. When we get to this particular channel, I'm then going to go under the underground here and actually make another double channel down into this particular into these next zones. So I'm just going to go back across from here. Whoops, and channel. So in down, and that's going to then come back there. So I'm just going to channel this area first. That way, I'll at least get established, and I'll then have a have a ramp. Actually, I will go and and do the, I'll do all of these. Uh, and just get them channeled. So they'll then dig straight down. That will be a depth of two from what we need. And uh, it will then still create the channel out through this other side. And let's just go and see where the where the water is. So the water, I want to be in the middle of, middle of the deepest area where there's a cliff above it, or at least an area above it where it's hard for them to get where other things to get access to it. So there's a, an area, a drop of about two. There's no actual cliffs other than there, unfortunately. Now, the other thing I could do would be to make use of this one here. I think I might do that and have my actual outlet come off through here. So let's start to now plan where we want that to be, or even this one. What it just what it means is that it's it's a bit actually that's even that's not too bad. And that's sort of more in line with where we want it to be. Like when we have a look at this, oops, where are we? Like we're sort of right there. That's the layer there. That's, that's how deep it's going to go. And we're then going to have like two layers in through this side. So I'm just going to go for the layer below. I'm just going to go and quickly build some more walls. Sort of out along here. Make that one out of granite. And the other one as well. So from that point there... Again, we've got to be really careful that we block this off completely. And I'll, I'll just leave a, a one access point. I'll, I'll still actually, yeah, I should have just gone and built this one. Yep, so I'll just go and grab both granites. And I'm just going to leave one area um, open. So I'm just going to suspend the construction there. So that's now been suspended. And this will ultimately be where we then have our, our um, the bottom of our well. Now, um, this is also going to be the top layer because this is the top layer of the water. The water doesn't go any higher than this. So the water won't go any higher than this from that, from that source. It will from the aquifer if I open up the aquifer too much. But that's actually not too bad. So that's an open source in through there. So we could actually go and also then create um, a fishing zone along this area. So let's just go and channel this one out. But uh, on the layer above, but the way above it, we're going to have to then sort of work it. So let's go and, and end up with a fishing zone deeper in. This is a, actually, this is a bit dangerous. No, I think I'll just I'll keep the fishing zone separate. Uh, I, I do need to make sure that it's well away from everything else. Now, um, let's start back over here again. 
So this is actually okay in through this side. So water will find its own level as long as it doesn't go through a diagonal. So it'll, it'll then come back to this level even if I dig deeper. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to dig a channel that comes out from here. And I'll, I'll sort of set this up properly. But if we just come back across, out from here. Now where does our stuff then finish? All the way down into there. All right, so what I could do, in fact, if that's the case, do I even need to do that? I sort of wanted to get, um, I don't want to just have one layer above me. So I will actually have a channel that comes, that comes in. So we'll just channel this one. And that way we go down to the layer underneath. That way I keep going a couple of layers down. Now this one will then match us up in through here. So I can either mat, uh, like I can either have it come straight back into this particular zone, and have that be where we where we fill everything back up, which might be a good idea I think. Or I can come in from the top; it'll still just fill in that layer. Um, let's do it this way I think. Oops, we don't want to channel; we just want to dig. This is just purely a mine, a mining operation. as is this. Okay, so that's going to be a, a, a pit that goes all the way out to the other side. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to be doing is making sure that when we do come back, I'll, I'll channel up there actually, because we're coming from this angle. So dig the ramp right there. So that will then dig up. Then I don't want this one dug just at the, at the, at the start, because this is going to flood in really, really quickly. I need to have everything ready to go. So we're just going to go and uh, I can just either destroy it or put a marker there if I wanted to. I know that that's what I want to do, so I'm not going to forget why I'm doing it. Uh, that's now done. Let's just go back across. And so what this will then allow us to do is in, the, in, in this zone, um, this will be too deep from this layer through here. And is that the same depth here? That, that will then fill up because that's the depth of that particular water source, it will fill up to this level, which is then going to be our, um, our uh, actually this is a bit of a, yeah, no, that's okay. This is gonna make, make sure it's always under flood. So when we get that done, we'll have a channel down. I'm gonna to need to somehow get a way up, another way up. Well, actually, if I keep this open, that's gonna that'll be it. That'll be it. So we can get this one really quite nice with no other access down into it. All right, let's just unpause and let them sort of go across and do what they're doing. Now, there's still a lot of work for everyone to go and do. If you look at the tasks, there's a lot of storage. There's uh, all sorts of different things: dumping items, constructing buildings. Where are you building that one? Yeah, they're building these now. And we need to deconstruct as well. So they're bringing the rocks in. Let's just go to F2. They're now pulling this apart, which is good. The doors have now been put into place. That's now been placed. We'll just go and uh, add the other the other dog. Actually, I don't know which dog this is. I think it's the second dog now that we've placed there. So we've got this one in the, on the restraint. We just need to get the second one into that location. Now these can't put up a fight at all, but uh, at least they give us some warning. Now this has now been put, we're now going to go and make it a 4x3, and again it's only 3 by 3 because of the aesthetics of it. Um, I just like the look of it. <laughs> That's all it is. Bridge raising to the top to close off both walls. And we've just got granite there, I'll just go all. Okay, so they're going to place those as well. Yeah, we've got... Uh, we've got other people sort of doing other things down there through this other side. God, I love this version of the game. It's just, it's so, whoa, what do we got? A naked mole dog. These will cause some issues. I'm just going to lock the door. I don't want it coming inside. They'll try to get in and, and do stuff. So if we see them, just just block access. When, they, when our guys come back, we'll then sort of do other things with them. There's heaps of them out there. We don't want to be dealing with them. They're, they're, they're weak, but they, they can bite and they can sort of cause a little bit of damage. If you have a bit of a look at it and see what their description actually is. A large pale rodent with, with loose hanging hairless skin. It has long teeth and it's incredibly powerful bite. It's found underground. He is incredibly quick to heal and, and slow to tire. He is uh, incredibly skinny. His skin is pink. His eyes are black. So the naked mole dogs are not, not like they're not 
bad, bad. Now, we've already done the top one there. I, I know that with that one blocked, we can't get into the cavern layer. And we do actually have uh, our diagnostician back out this way as well. I think I'll just wait. If the dog if the dog is put there, I think the dog will be able to take them on. Let's just wait for the dog, and then we'll sort of come back and look at other things. Um, so they're now trapped out there. Anyone that's actually out in the caverns is now trapped. And um, I probably should open it up just got no real easy way of dealing with these if, if they all come in I'll just let them run around for a little while now that that one's hunting them all right let's open her up I'll just watch until hopefully the dog will be placed here fairly soon he's now in whoops okay that one's now in I don't think we've got anyone else outside, so let's now just forbid that, forbid that one. This is why you want doors, because it, it's immediate. As soon as you do it, it's immediate. All right, off we go again. I won't make that into fishing zone, because I've got no real, I haven't really built anything. Oh, there we go. Grab the dog. <laughs> okay. Now, you were scared when you were out there. This will then sort that out. And so that... Both dogs are now in, in both areas that we've sort of got allocated. Now we'll have a bit of a look at the tasks again. So how are we going? Uh, yep, got one construct building back in through there. Another wall has been, we've suspended that ourselves, which we will, which is what we want. Now, as far as the digging is concerned, if we'll just go back and have another look at uh, what's been done with this channel. So we've gone all the way through here then go up to this location here. Now, I don't want to dig through there until I'm completely ready. And one of the things I want to be doing here is I do want to dump all of this because, um, and now have they, have they done, they haven't done that one yet. Here they come. So somebody's going to come in and, and start to sort of dig this one. Now, that should still be okay, I think, if they just do it from that level. They'll, they'll be able to get there. I can always channel up if there's, a, if there's another sort of problem. And I just need it too deep so that the, so that any well we build here will be okay. Now, the other thing with building a well, let's just build the well now, um, is we need to have blocks. So I'm just going to go to my Stoneworkers Workshop, add a new task, and just make some rock blocks. And I'll just make a couple of these. Uh, they, they, they are useful. We just only need one for a well. So we'll just go grab those. We've got heaps of ropes. We've got some buckets. If I was unsure, again, I could just go across into my Carpenter's Workshop and uh, add a new task and and build a, a, a bucket, a <laughs> wooden bucket. So you can build the buckets yourselves uh, as well. Uh, you need a, a rope, a bucket, and a block to actually to, to build one of those. Uh, so that will be the well, and so be the water for the well. Now, I would like them to take all of this out of here uh, initially, but we I'm going to set up a few little things as a bit of a fail safe. Now, one of the things I want to put out uh, along here is actually a floodgate. But if a rock tumbles into it, it won't close. So I'm going to build two floodgates and link them to one lever because I, I just want to, I just as a bit of a fail safe, just in case one doesn't work. Because anything that can swim will be able to swim straight through into our, into our well and then crawl out of the well. And we don't want that. Uh, it'd be like the ring, that movie, The Ring. Uh, so we're just going to go across into here. We're going to go and grab the, um, uh, the furniture. Actually, I didn't, haven't built any of these, have I? So I haven't built any, it's not furniture, it's actually a, uh, sorry, build. It's going to be machines. And then we've got the um, the actual floodgates. Now, I'm pretty sure I haven't built any. So I'll just go and place one there. No, we need two, two of those because I'm going to build two of them. So I'll just go back up and build. Uh, where was it? No, down. So I'm sort of used to having those, those sorts of things at the bottom of my fortress, not at the top. Uh, so we, that's wood. Just go back into here, add new task, floodgates. We probably ultimately need a few of them, so let's just go and get them sorted out. I'll pause the game and then we'll come back when we've got the floodgates. And what, another thing I will actually do is just go back down into my lever room and uh, we'll just set up a, um, a lever for the floodgates as well. So they can be sort of towards the back end of this room. The room's not pretty gonna be big enough ultimately. Gates are going to have to be built. I'll just pause while I wait for everything to be built. 
Now, they've dug through here, but they actually just basically sort of uh, fell fell on through as they sort of came through. So what we're just going to do is just going to go across now and, and set it up so that they can channel up. Um, yeah, I might just channel, I'll just do a channel up through here. So we'll do it this way. I'll channel all of that up and then we'll channel another one down in through here as well. Just so that we've got it, it doesn't really matter. And um, that way they should be able to walk their way around. I might actually, um, if they channel down, they're not going to be able to get it on the other side. So in this case, not that it matters much because we've already now got the layer that we need, but let's just do it anyway. I'll just mine this out to start with. If we can't do it, I'm just going to go and get rid of that. And it will then just come back in. Now this is all going to be channeled, so I'm just going to remove this. This will be coming from the layer below, will come up. They'll then build this, and we need to just make sure that they've got an access way down to actually do the down channel. So that one has to be on its own. This one can be on its own as well. And so they'll just come back in, mine these. Now we should actually now have a, a floodgate or two. Let's just go and build one of those. Uh, oops, wrong one again. I always do this. It's machines, floodgate. I'll just throw one fairly close to where we actually are down this way. Yeah, we've got only got one of them at this point in time. And I would like another one. It'll be built fairly soon. Now we've channeled that one up. They haven't gone into there yet. I'm not sure why they haven't done that. Sometimes it can be a problem for them. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to channel up again. One more channel up. I do want them to clean up this whole area. I'll go this other side. It's still going to not give them access. Well, it may do. Uh, it may do with the corner. No, I still wouldn't have done it. I'm going to need to put a... Um, I'll just see how it goes. We've got to try to get them up to the next level. They're not accessing it, are they? Hmm... I don't want to make a massive area. <laughs> I'm sort of happy enough with what we've got. Yeah, I can do a, I can do a ramp up here. I don't think I'm going to access it unless I put the ramp right in the middle here somewhere, and then take it down. I might just do that. Just make it out of logs or something. So sometimes it's going to be hard to figure out. Okay. You know where does something need to be just make a, a tower cap log ramp and then we'll remove it that's probably directly above no it's just off from where the well will be we can now start to build the well now what do we got we've got the rabbits are fighting that's okay uh yeah, we can't make traction benches without chains so to make a well we've now got the components that we require so we'll just go across into constructions in through here and machines well up through this side so place the well in an open space above water to provide a real... So this one probably won't allow us until we've got water there. So actually, no, it will actually. It's, it'll still allow us to do it even though the water's not there yet. So I'll just have another look at that one. So it's going to be machines well. So above water to provide a relatively safe area for your citizens to draw water requires mechanisms, blocks, a chain or, or rope and a bucket. So we'll go and grab that one. I forgot about the mechanisms. So we've got blocks so we'll grab some blocks we've got a bucket now this has actually been jewel encrusted they're going to use this bucket a lot so let's let's bring the jewel encrusted bucket that's going to make them feel good uh, we've got some ropes as well we've got some good good quality ropes in through here as well we'll use that and we've got mechanisms so we'll just grab those as well so that's the well that's going to be built so when we actually do finally flood that chamber underneath um, this will be a really nice source also it's very important to have this really close to the hospital so we've still got our water source through here. This will probably then become our water source, I would think. Automatically, it becomes a water source. Um, got these little cave spiders around in the in the in there. That won't, doesn't really matter one way or another. Now that's been placed, but no one is still getting up to here. What I might do is I might just create a um, just so I got the ramp leading up. I'm just going to go back up, and um, this is like the ramp. 
doesn't have anywhere to go. So you can see it's a, it's an upward slope, but it doesn't go, it's got nowhere to go in slope two. An upward slope requires a wall up against it. So we'll just go and do that. Go and grab a wall and we'll place the wall directly underneath where we want to mine. I could do it here actually. Let's do it there. And we'll make this out of, out of logs as well. And then what you'll see is the ramp will then take shape once this has all been built. There we are. So you can see it now goes from, it softens up until it sort of comes up into this area. And now they've got access up into here. We can now start to do uh, some of the channeling down that we were wanting to do over before. So we'll just go and get a channel down here. But I'll have to, you know, sort of get these other bits and pieces done first. Now the channels have all been done. So now we just go across and we do, do a channel down through here as well. And there as well. And there as well. And there as well. Done. That then goes down until the... So we've now channeled through the flooring of this area. This is now going to be one great big sort of full... It's going to be full of water until it gets to the well, which is over here. So that's all we need here. Uh, I'm now going to go and disassemble these. So we're just going to go across and take them off. So we use this one here, designate constructed walls, floors, etc. I'm just going to get both of those set up for, for removal. Waiting for this one to be constructed. So that was really fast. The, the, look, building out of wood is so much faster than out of, out of stone. And we do want to get all of this stuff out of here before before it goes too far. Now, just to make sure that we that they sort of end up getting it, let's just go and dump it so it goes into our dump zone. That way it's, we don't have to sort of think too much about it. Now, I would like to get all of the stuff out from here because it will it will it'll um, it'll cause issues in our um, in the in the workings of the actual fortress itself. Now, I'm going to go back up to here, which is where we're going to be mining this thing out, and just going to place another floodgate in here. So um, machines, floodgates. Oh, no access. Okay, you can't you can't do that from a ramp. I can place a floodgate there. I think I can still mine from the other side. If not, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, withdraw it. A fair few different things happening here. Yeah, it's just the rabbits. <laughs> I've got to make sure that they don't... Uh, well, not them, but I've just got to make sure it's nothing else. Floodgate we can access to here. Oh, no, access to floodgate. Oh, you don't have a floodgate yet. We'll try it from the bottom because I can still walk on that little flat area and then sort of go from there. Uh, let's just go down to the workshops. Is anyone building that floodgate? It's a mechanics shop. Should be a floodgate. Now, sometimes the floodgates will be in transition uh, off to a different location. So they can be being placed in here. So if we have a look at the tasks, and this is like our catch-all. If there's anyone sort of taking a task across to that stockpile, which there may be. No, there's not. So there should be two floodgates. It should be around somewhere. It's not showing in there. Okay, he's got heaps of stuff that he's carrying around. Oh, there's gems everywhere in, in through here. They've spilt these. They've spilt all the uh, valuable stuff. Not sure why they're carrying all of that. This has all been forbidden. I'll just unforbid that now. Oh, here we go. It'll be, it'll be in here. So someone would have been taking it into this furniture stockpile. So if we have a quick look, um, we've got hatches. I'm not seeing floodgate, a floodgate in here. No, I'm not seeing it there. Oh, there, there's one. Now there should be another one as well. So this one, this granite floodgate is there. Is anyone else carrying anything to the furniture stockpile? So if we have another look at the uh, the tasks. And sort of have a bit of a look to see. Um, yeah, furniture stockpile, store, store item. There are a few things listed to go into there. I don't think this is it, though. No, I think that that's okay. Let's just try that again. I might just even go and build one more. Just in case it may it may have been in, in transit when we were trying to get it to to get up there. <clears throat> yeah, so they should be able to even walk back across and do what they have to do. So we'll just go across, machines, floodgate. 
No extra floodgate. Okay, I'll have to wait for another one to be built. <clears throat> yeah, so she's going to now build another floodgate. Thought I had built a couple of them. There we go. So the floodgate is now will be in here. Got blocks. And we do have floodgates in here, but they've been tasked for different sorts of things. <clears throat> that one hasn't been tasked yet, so we'll make use of that one. And again, we'll just come back up. And now we'll try it. Without it, with, with when this doesn't have a task, which should be available to us. No it's the floodgate. What is going on here? Oh, this is closed. <laughs> That's what's going on here. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to now link this one to the lever that we had. So I actually did that in the wrong order. There's always there's always a good reason for things. <laughs> so we're just going to go across into here, link the lever, and we're just going to go up to, up to that floodgate that we just had placed. We need to open this floodgate. So we'll do it now. So somebody will then come. We'll just wait until we see someone come across into here. They'll then put a mechanism in. There's no mechanisms in this one just yet, just the floodgate itself. So there was a, there's now a mechanism. And we now have to open that because there's, this is like a door. It's like a, not, it's not, not like a draw bridge, but it's like a door. So we need to then just bring this one down. God, there's a lot of stuff that's been dropped off in here. <clears throat> I don't know why they've done that. Yeah, something has certainly uh, gone amiss through here. It hasn't tumbled down the stairs, but that is a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why that's all there. Anyway, we'll leave them to it for now. And um, alert. Okay, we've got an elf merchant which is now visiting. That's okay. <clears throat> Rock crafts have been completed. Whether it's cleared. That's all okay. I'll just pause until we get this uh, this well built, essentially. Oh, here we go. We're now in early autumn again. Now, early autumn, the, the merchant is not going to be wanting to sell anything to us because early autumn is when, we, when we're going to get the next trade caravan. But I will pause this. Wow, it happened just as soon as it finished saving. Uh, the dead walk, hide while you can. <laughs> I'm going to end this episode here, guys. And then the next episode, we're then going to start to take over or t start to deal with this particular threat. At least we've seen them at a long, long distance. Um, this is useful and there's a lot of interesting things in here so in the next episode we'll have a good look at it we can see a couple of the hands in there by the looks by the, by the looks in through, through that side but this is going to be fun uh should be necromancers and all sorts of different things now with them so we're now going to be under siege and um and now we have to deal with other uh, other ways of sort of operating um this will then change the focus of what we're doing um yeah there's a lot to do now, we probably will actually ride the siege out. It'll probably last for a year or two. We won't be really ready for quite some time. Anyway, I'm going to leave this episode here. Forget the well. <laughs> we'll come back to that while we're doing all the other bits and pieces. So thanks for watching. Unfortunately, there's going to be other populations that will now sort of arrive as well. Like, uh, so there'll be people coming in. I don't know how we're going to sneak them in. I don't know how we're going to do that. We may have to create another way up. Maybe maybe through the um, through the aquifer again, but in another corner of the map, and so actually have like an access point where people can get down if they can get through, and then we can sort of try to close things off. Anyway, we'll see what we, where we go, um, and that'll be in the next episode. At least we now get to do something a bit more interesting with the sieges. Now, quite often we are safe; we can lock ourselves in, so we don't have to we don't have to panic about this at all. But this will be interesting. I'll catch you next time.